If you want to know the real difference between the original Battlefront games and the classic collection then you've come to the right place, because in this video I'm going to be looking at the old console and PC games and comparing them up against the brand new remastered bundle to highlight the differences, changes and new additions, along with the unfortunate launch issues for the classic collection. Ok let's start with the console version and then move on to the PC. Now what I have here is the original Xbox version of both Battlefront 1 and 2 running on my Series X. Both both these games are part of Microsoft's backwards compatibility game catalog, and this means the games are running at a faster frame rate with a higher resolution and auto HDR. You know, kind of like the classic collection? So what's the difference? Well let's start with Battlefront 1. Now the classic collection has upscaled all the game's textures to 4K, but they're still the same 2004 textures, this time just a bit crispier. Unfortunately this does result in an almost 60 GB download size. Now the regular Xbox version of the original upscales it to 1080p but because the upscaling is done in engine Battlefront 1 remains only 3 gigabytes in size while its sequel is only 4. So on the left we have 7 gigabytes versus 57 on the right. The classic collection upscaling is most evident in larger open world maps that have big background scenery textures like Hoth or Geonosis. Compared to them the original console textures look very low res and washed out, especially when playing on a big TV or monitor. However one of the reasons for the classic collections backgrounds looking so much better better is because it uses the PC version as a baseline, which always had better textures. For example, here is the old Steam version of Battlefront 1 running at 1080p with the graphics settings maxed out, and here is the classic collection version of Battlefront 1. Suddenly the difference is a lot harder to tell. Now the classic collection does have improved lighting which is most noticeable on stages like Bespin platforms. In general the colours and contrast are better balanced in the classic collection when compared to the console version. For me, the classic collection did also run at a consistently higher frame rate in single player mode than the console version, but I did not notice any significant difference in draw distance or texture loading between the two versions. In fact, certain elements like grass have this gradual fade in effect in the console version meanwhile the classic collection would just have them pop in, but that also seems to be something that happened in the original PC version. Some of Battlefront 1's levels do look better than others when comparing both versions. For example, the original Geonosis looks very hazy and washed out when compared to the remaster, and the newer crisp backgrounds of Hoth do really stand out because you'll be spending a big portion of that level in the open. But then you get levels like Tatooine which look almost identical. In fact the hot air effect from the original console version seems to be absent from the classic collection. Now the Xbox version of the classic collection has altered some of the controls, most notably the starfighters, and unfortunately there doesn't seem to be any way to reconfigure the mappings at least on the console version. Now controls aside the gameplay itself seems unchanged from the original. The bots are still running around all over the place and the games retain their trademark 2000s jank. And here we have the male x-wing attempting to mate with the female. And this being Battlefront 1, you can of course park your Starfighter wherever the hell you want. The loading times were always faster for the original game, all the 4K textures probably slow the classic collection down a bit. But can someone please explain why the classic collection has decided to replace the iconic two-tone chime? to just playing the first chime twice. Now I'm going to talk about my online experiences with both games a little later, in the meantime let's move on to Battlefront 2 single player, and this game did get a few more features in the classic collection compared to the first. The official description lists Jabba's palace as the only bonus in Battlefront 1. Meanwhile Battlefront 2 includes all of these maps plus two new heroes that you can use in assault mode. And yes these are bonuses if you compare them to the original Playstation 2 version, but every one of these was first included as part of the DLC for the Xbox version which which thankfully has been included as part of the backwards compatibility release, which means that both the original and classic collection versions have Kit Visto and Asajj Ventress as playable heroes, along with a bunch of maps from the first game. But the novelty of these maps is kind of diminished in the classic collection because well all you have to do is just go back to the menu and boot up the first game to play them. Now the classic collection does have Excel mode across both the console and PC versions. This mode was first introduced on PC and takes advantage of the beefier hardware to spawn in 
in way more bots across three of the biggest maps, which would result in these glorious scenes of chaos. And while it is limited to single player only, this is a genuinely great addition to finally have for console players. Classic Collection's graphical improvements do seem to be a bit more evident on Battlefront 2. For example, the higher textures and better lighting are noticeable in the Jedi Temple. But I did experience some strange lighting effects. Mace Windu's lightsaber is a lot thicker these days, if you know what I mean. That, and there were some weird flickering lights on Kamino. Hey, somebody want to change the light bulb? The slightly better lighting effects were also noticeable in space battles. The Galactic Conquest map does look better this time around. I am glad they brought back the menus from the console version of Battlefront 2. The PC schematics always felt a bit lifeless. But the issue here is that they just ran some kind of upscaling algorithm on the pre-baked background instead of making a new one, which resulted in some very crispy looking rebel pilots. Okay, so that's the original Xbox version with some in-engine backwards compatibility upscaling up against the classic collection both running on Series X. But what about the PC? Well, here is the original vanilla Steam version with all the graphics settings set to max compared to the classic collection on PC. And well, there seems to be even less of a difference this time around. In fact, let's play a game. I'm going to show you some footage and you, dear viewer, have to guess if it's from the original Steam version or the classic collection. Okay, here we go. Now, how about this one? Well, here's the answer. Okay, let's try it one more time. We've got this one. And this one. And here it is. Did you get the right answer? With that being said, both versions currently cost £8.50 on Steam, which means you can get both for £17 versus the classic collection, which is £29. And I have seen the originals go down quite a bit during sale season. Okay, let's talk about multiplayer. Now, the classic collection's big selling point was online play, which was still alive and kicking on PC, but has been dead on consoles for years. And it was a pretty major selling point because the original games were great fun online back in the day. And so, ever since the announcement, the fandom waited for the classic collection with bated breath, hoping to recapture the feeling of the good old days. And then the game came out. Now, as of the making of this video, the classic collection has only been out for about 48 hours and already it feels like me trashing the poor multiplayer experience would be like beating a dead horse. The internet went hard this time. I haven't seen excitement turn into backlash so quick since, well, EA's Battlefront. As for my experiences, I tried playing online both on the Xbox and PC versions. On launch day, I did get kicked from both quite a few times and experienced my fair share of connection errors. And from what I read, my experience wasn't as bad as a lot of people but it still wasn't great. It did improve on the second day, but there was a lot less people playing then, so maybe that's why. Now, Aspire have already made a statement saying they're going to work to improve the online experience, but I think by that point, a lot of people would have either moved on or just got a refund. Now, connection issues aside, my biggest issue was the region lock servers. Me and fellow Star Wars enthusiast Neo Sai spent an hour trying to find a common server, but me being in the UK and him being in the US, it just wasn't possible. So instead, we loaded up the original version of Battle Battlefront 2 where we were able to play together instantly. My other issue was with the game's local multiplayer. You see, growing up, my best Battlefront memories were actually comprised of going over to friends' houses and playing Galactic Conquest on split screen. And so, as soon as the Classic Collection got announced, I messaged my friends and arranged a meetup day of launch for old time's sakes. You know, because I foolishly assumed that the Classic Collection would have four-player split screen, like the original Xbox version had 20 years ago. Unfortunately, the Classic Collection split screen is limited to two players. We still met up, we just ended up playing the original Xbox version and you know what? We had a great time. Which kind of tells you everything you need to know about the classic collection, but that's just my take. Please let me know your thoughts and experiences with this game in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Please consider supporting me on Patreon and a big thanks to all my existing patrons. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.